What's going on guys, Sam Norris here, the Property Investors Broker. Um, I was at Partners in Property Bristol recently and the question of buying cash came up. And funnily enough, um, just by complete coincidence, it's also come up today when speaking to a client. And I thought it was a really, really good opportunity for me to come and speak to you guys about the implications of buying cash and basically the the case studies, I suppose, we can call them the stories of what came out of yesterday and uh, and today in terms of speaking to this client um, and how this might influence you and, and sort of change tactics uh, going forward. So a lot of people buy properties cash, especially when they're looking to do some sort of work to them and then refinance them at a later date to re-release their cash and then go and repeat the process. Now, a lot of people will actually use a bridging loan to do this. Um, I'd, I'd probably say majority of my clients obviously do that because that's where they're speaking to me. Um, and that does allow them to do sort of multiple projects as well because they're putting less money in and it's not held in there for, you know, all, they're not putting all their money in for, for a six month period. But um, the implication really of this, um, this these these two uh, things that we were discussing was actually these people are taking out bridges once they've actually bought the property cash and the reason that they're doing that is to pay for the refurbishment works and that might all sound absolutely fine and dandy to a lot of people and absolutely that usually that that uh, that might not necessarily be too much of a problem however one thing that I've come across recently with a case uh, that I'm working on with a client is that um, one of the reasons why lenders, uh, mortgage lenders, are quite happy to refinance bridging more so than refinancing when you've bought cash is that they can kind of leverage that someone else has done the due diligence on the source of the uh, deposit or the monies that you've put in to, to purchase the property initially. When you've purchased cash, yes, of course, the solicitor has done an element of due diligence, but lenders probably don't believe that it's up to the level that they might wanna do it at. And so that can have a really negative impact sometimes on the follow-up mortgage application. So I'll give you an example of what happened recently. Um, and I've just warned a client literally a few minutes ago on an email, so I wanted to jump on and, uh, and talk about it straight away. The, um, the, the case that I was, I was gonna discuss was, a client bought with cash um, in, I believe, April last year, um, maybe even slightly before then, maybe February, March, who knows, but um, they bought cash, they then ran out of money um, when they were doing their refurbishment works on the property, so they had to then raise a bridging loan against the property for, I think it was something along the lines of about 60 grand. Fair enough, you might say. We got to refinance in the property um, to pay off that bridging loan and release more money so they can go off and buy loads more property. They've got a massive pipeline of potential offers on the table, which is awesome. The guy is like a, is, is, is a, almost like a professional sourcer. He literally just finds deals everywhere. And um, But we, we, we put this application forward and we hit a real snag when the lender was just asking endless questions about the source of funds to purchase the property with. And it probably was, it wasted about two weeks going back and forward. Look, the lender was quite slow in terms of their standard turnaround times to check documents and questions with their underwriting team. However, they it still added two weeks onto the process. And um, there's been some other issues with it, but that, they're, they're sort of beside the point. So why are they getting their knickers in a twist basically and the reason they're getting their knickers in a twist is that they don't have that control as i said over understanding what the source of those of that cash was when they purchased the property cash um you know they want to know build up a fund it's not it's not necessarily the lenders being assholes here it's it's the fact that you know they there's certain strict regulations that they need to adhere to uh, anti money laundering or AML as we call it um, making sure that those funds were clean um, and they didn't buy the property basically to launder the, the cash um, effectively because that you know traditionally has always been an amazing way of of of, uh, of cleaning uh, naughty money basically so they've um, they, they they can't do that and so we have to basically then track back months and months and months and months and months. We have to show the source of wealth of that if those funds were borrowed from elsewhere in terms of investor cash, we need to track that back. We need to probably get f uh, old statements from, from old investors. I mean, I'm talking worst case scenario here, guys, but, but it is definitely gonna fall into this kind of category. So 
that is, is just such a massive, massive issue. So what I would, I've suggested to these clients actually is to look at things in, a, in two slightly different ways. Um, and that is, first and foremost, if you know that you're gonna need the funds to cover the cost of the works, why not just take the bridge out at the beginning to cover the funds, uh, to cover the purchase, sorry. That is a much cleaner way of doing it and is gonna cause any prospective lender in the future uh, much less uh, aches and pains in terms of their underwriting and what they need to do. And of course, you much less aches and pains as well because you're not gonna have to you know, track back months and months and months of statements and, and, and you know, tracking the source of these funds. So it makes it a lot easier from, from your perspective as well. Now, some people will say, well, you know, I need to buy cash because I need to do it quickly. Well, in all, with all due respect, you know, when, when it comes to buying with a bridge, the only difference in, in timing should be uh, probably about two to four working days of underwriting. Um, legals can be uh, can be um, instructed as soon as you know the initial underwrite is done or the terms are signed. In some instances, I've got a case on the mo uh, working on the moment um, that as, long, as soon as the terms were actually signed and sent back, the you know, the lender instructed their solicitors and contacted the the, the borrower solicitor straight away. So you in that way it was like one day slower before the legal process kicked off and yes you can say well look the lender's going to have certain requirements but in this day and age you know you can you can reduce those as much as possible you can take that indemnity insurance for the searches which you know makes things a lot quicker as well and that covers a lot of the of the, the standard list of legals that a lender will ask for so actually um i've just completed a, a bridge which was 13 working days from start to finish you know, you, you sometimes cash purchases take long, a lot longer than that. So um, I would reevaluate that and, and think about whether it is better for you to actually raise those funds on purchase rather than after you purchase the, the, the property. Because when you get to that refinance stage, it is going to cause some uh, some extra grief which yeah i don't know about you guys but i'm all about the lack of grief like i'm i'm cool with 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 sticking it staying uh, staying away from that so um short video today that's all i kind of wanted to say is that you know just just think about that there are actually lenders out there as well just fyi that won't refinance cash purchases within six months so if it's something that you're trying to turn around quickly as well and you think that that's gonna that's gonna help you it won't um, so just food for thought, just a little bit of a, you know, nothing too structured on this video. I just wanted to get some thoughts out there. Hope that it was helpful. And um, yeah, any ideas for, for or questions that you've got, property finance related, chuck them over to me. Um, sometimes it's, it's, I, can, I can definitely kind of answer them one to one, but these videos also give me a chance to answer those kind of questions for, for loads of people at the same time as well, which I think is great for the community and, and you know, I'm all for educating people and, and trying to share my knowledge that I've built up doing this for 13 years. Um, you know, I've come across quite a number of really odd scenarios, so hopefully I would have come across yours previously and I'll know the answer. Um, but look, if I don't, I know where to go and get that information from and, um, and I'm happy to do that and I'm happy to share that as well. Um, I'm a great fan of sharing knowledge and uh, and value. So anyway, as I said, I'll try to make this a quick video. It turned out to be a bit longer than I wanted, uh, but cool. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you um, you found it interesting. Uh, go and follow me on Instagram at the Sam Norris and on TikTok at the Sam Norris and Twitter at the Sam Norris. Find me on LinkedIn, find me on YouTube. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. There's tons of videos like this. And uh, But anyway, thanks guys. Catch you on the next one. Cheers, bye.